Good morning friends, Merly here and welcome back to Gardening in Kentucky YouTube channel. This video is about preparing your seedlings to be planted outdoor and preparing your seedlings to sell if you're doing a plant sale this year. So I'm going to show you some progress of these seedlings that I have been hardening off. There are some positives and negatives in what I am doing, but right now my greenhouse is not yet fixed so i am hardening off my seedlings in my carport i'll show you the first group here behind me are the peppers and the lettuce seedlings these are the jalapeno peppers they're looking so beautiful look at that <laughs> they're moving so much it's so windy right now and it's good for them to get this wind because they will be acclimated to the outdoor growing conditions. I mean, it can be very windy, it can be very hot, it can be cold. Most of them look good. You can tell that the plants are mostly hardened off. The leaves are a little bit thicker and more green. Now this one in here, this leaf is still thin. And as you can see, it's a lighter green color. Um, and that's the reason why I still cannot put this plants under direct sunlight. But most of them are doing great. There was one night when the temperature went down to 48. And it was windy. I tried to cover them, but still i got some damage on the leaves but it's not that many uh, damage on the pepper plant so the pepper plants are good now here our lettuces they are doing great they're loving the cool temperatures so there's no problem with that with the lettuce plants in fact i already have some lettuce growing in my main garden okay over here we have some more lettuce seedlings now these are over seeded six cells i was gonna transplant them into like one per cell seven to cell trays but i don't have any more time to deal with them so i just leave them like this and i'm gonna plant them in either in my garden in a uh, plant tower or maybe I'm going to plant this in containers. We'll see. Um, these are the basil plants. They're looking okay. But they're still alive. We have some damage on the lower leaves. Again, this is from that windy, cold condition that we got just for one night. And it damaged some of the leaves. But that's okay. They're going to survive. Now, these ones in here have more damage. These were the ones that I put in my produce stand. So, we use a shed for a produce stand. But that one cold evening, I forgot to turn on the heater in the produce stand. And it damaged some of the leaves. Now, what you can do with the basil plants, it's actually not that bad. Because you can basically just pinch this off. And you see this new growth, we're going to remove the damaged leaves. Now we can toss this. My chickens will probably eat this. And then we'll see here, we have some new growth. So once this will grow again, this will look beautiful. Um, this one right here, it's the same. So you can do the same thing. But for now, I'm just going to leave this alone. Now this... Okay, these leaves are bad. So let's pinch this off. Here. And so, look at that. They're looking good now. And basils, I mean, basil plants grow quickly. So there's no problem with the basil. I'm seeing here just a few damage on the leaves of the sweet banana peppers. But it's only a few of them. Okay, let's move on to the tomatoes because I am hardening off a lot of tomatoes. I have over 1,000 seedlings right now in my carport um, with the tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes 
are for my plant sale and I was supposed to have my plant sale yesterday but then few days before my plant sale schedule we got cool temperatures so my plants did not harden off properly got some damage on the leaves as well and you can see here let's just pinch this off I'm gonna show you this one now this one this was from the cold and from the wind they did not get direct sunlight yet I was supposed to expose them to direct sunlight um, starting Friday yeah starting Friday I was gonna expose them to direct sunlight however they got that very cold temperature and windy evening um, Thursday and then Friday morning I noticed some damage on the leaves so I usually just pinch them off yeah the plants will survive tomatoes are a little bit more forgiving than some plants so if you see some dying leaves yellowing leaves you can just pinch them off and then your plant will regrow here so but overall they're not really that bad and also one of the things that I noticed is that um, the change in the color on the bottom of the leaves you see that that's purple now this I know that this is not a nutrient deficiency because these plants are well fed and if you've seen my previous video they look so beautiful in that video when they were new here in my carport um, so the reason why these plants develop a purple color on the um, on the back of the leaves see that the purple the reason is the temperature so basically when it gets very low like I think lower than 55 degrees Fahrenheit or lower than 50 about that temperature um, they don't like it the leaves then turn purple um, and when they do that uh, I've read that they cannot absorb the right nutrients because of the temperature because the temperature is related to the growing conditions of your plants of your tomatoes so since we're talking about tomatoes but it's basically it's one of the um, one of the factors that we need to consider when we grow our plants the temperature now this ones here these are the Kellogg's breakfast they got more damage than the other variety I think the reason for that is that the Kellogg's breakfast and also this the cream sausage tomatoes yeah cream sausage and the Kellogg's breakfast I've seen a lot more damage to the cream sausage by the way and I think the reason for that is because they were placed here on the side so they were getting most of the wind um, cold temperatures there's really nothing um, that is protecting them from all of these elements like they just get all of the wind and you can see right now they're just moving and um, flipping over through the wind now down here I'm gonna show you these are the uh, Cherokee purple they're doing good because these are hardened off already now and you can tell because the leaves are thick and the stems are also thick and they're straight and they don't sway when it's windy see they don't move as much now here this is beef steak and you can tell that the stems of the beef steak tomatoes are lighter green and look at this poor San Marzano they're so leggy but that's okay um, all right let's move on to the other plants so here we have our okra seedlings usually I direct seed my okra in the ground this year I decided to start them indoor so that I can have an earlier harvest of my okra since we are running a produce stand so I would love to have an early harvest 
um, okras germinate super duper fast. Less than five days, they're up. And I noticed that it's a good idea to take them outside right away as long as the weather and the temperature permits because these plants are just doing fine outdoor. They didn't get any damage just like the tomatoes and the peppers and the basil. And the next here, oh, look at these beautiful seedlings, guys. These are the cucumbers. So we have a lot of cucumbers. I know, one, two, three, four trays of cucumbers. Um, I think two trays are pickling and two trays are slicing cucumbers. Um, I will probably sell a couple of trays. So one pickling, one slicing cucumbers because i don't have that much room to grow all of these cucumber plants and then here is our moringa remember the one time i created a video in um seeding moringa and here they are uh, they just take time to germinate almost three weeks to sprout for these beautiful plants but here they are right now they're looking so nice next these are the long purple eggplants and i love eggplants and a lot of people that i know love eggplants so i'm going to plant some of this and sell some and i still have some eggplants that need to be up potted in my basement i think one mistake that i made with the eggplants was that i didn't plant them too soon like it should have been the eggplants that i planted first before i did my jalapeno peppers I kind of forgotten about that because last year my eggplants grew super duper fast they were started together with the jalapenos and they beat the jalapenos in growing like they got so big too big too soon and it was still cold so i decided to just wait for a couple of weeks before i planted the eggplant so these eggplants were planted about the same time i seeded most of my tomatoes but they're still small but that's okay now that they're outside they should be fine let's look at some other seedlings guys a few days ago i created a short on peanuts well these are the peanuts that are already about two to three inches tall look at that the problem is that I seeded them in a 72 cell tray so they're very tight as of now they are looking fine but I think here in less than a week this is gonna be really super duper tight and I am seeing low 40s in my nighttime temperatures next week so I would really hate to pot them but we'll see what's gonna happen I'll find a way to keep this from growing too fast next because i mean i would love to tra transfer them in the ground the ground is ready for them but if it's gonna be very cold i don't know i'll either plant them in the ground and cover or a pot next water spinach oh these water spinach are looking great and they're just waiting for me to move them in a bigger container and see here uh there's still yeah there's a few damage on the leaves because i started hardening this off the same time i hardened off the peppers and the tomatoes and here guys look at the next one i know they're they're new they just sprouted but i am so excited for these plants because these are the green bitter melon i forgot to see the white bitter melon so these are all green but in my experience the green bitter melons are a better seller than the white bitter melons anyway the green bitter melons are more bitter than the white ones so if you like that bitter taste of the bitter melon this is the one that you want and they're looking great so the moment i saw them sprouting i put them under the light after 24 hours they didn't actually grow that much i took them outside yesterday and uh, a couple of them are now standing up and opening so yeah this process is very slow for the bitter melon you would think that because melons grow so fast but not the bitter melon 
before I show you the other plants that I am growing in my basement, I'm going to show you this one. This is the oregano I pulled from my garden and I'm just rooting them in this tub. I could have put them in plastic cups, but the tub was the only thing that I could grab that day I went to my garden to get them. And they're looking great. I mean, they have, some of them have started rooting. You can tell that white ones. So they're looking great. They're going to be transplanted into smaller containers for selling. Now we are in my seedling area in my basement. So, and notice something new that I did here. I am finally using a fan for the plants. And um, I'm going to show you what we have here. We got some more tomatoes. These are the tiny thems. Look at that. They're so beautiful, but they're small. And these plants can grow to up to like two feet. Um, so these are suitable for container growing. Um, some of these are mixed. We got Jersey Devil, Roma Tomatoes, Tiny Tim. Uh, what else do we have? We have some Mortgage Lifter. Um, this one's in here. Red Cherry. Okay, so these are re Red Cherry. We have some overgrown Brassicas in the cells. I kind of ran out of time and didn't do anything to them. And then here we have the basil that also need to be up potted. And then these are some moringa that I am sprouting. Um, I started this with the ones that I showed you earlier, but they're, they've not sprouted yet. This is a sad looking tray of herbs. We have some peppermint growing. Parsley, no, no sage, cilantro, there are only three. And this one's full of algae. So I'm going to have to, yeah, this is, this is not a <laughs> success on this tray that we're looking at. But I think I can save some of this peppermint. I mean, they're growing already. They just need to be transplanted into a bigger container. And then next in here, we have some more eggplants these are peppers bell and cayenne and then here we have our squash so there's one thing here the the tall ones they're so leggy because i uh, sprout them without light and then i forget to check on them that morning but they've already sprouted they didn't have light so that's why they get leggy and there are three of them um this is called burpees butter butter bush winter squash this looks like a butternut squash but it grows like a bush so i'm thinking of growing this in a container and i'll probably cover this with a tool or a net so bugs can't get them um early summer crookneck there's one but so far that's all we have and there's like a little one in there that's the early summer crookneck as well so, and then down here, my most prized tomato seedlings, and I have a big problem with them. Number one, I kind of didn't have time to transplant them. But I will do that today. I have 100 plants. These are red-juice tomatoes. I have 100 seedlings that need to be up-potted. Now the rest of them, 150 of them, were already up potted. And I noticed that before I up potted them, they have this problem. Um, I'm going to show you. Well, I think it's almost gone now. But oh, you can still see it here. Look at this, guys. Well, aside from the purple color, there are some bumps on the underside of the leaves. That is called edema. And according to my research... Edema happens when the plant absorbs more water that it can use. In, uh, it can transpire. That's a word that they use. And um, I remember that I watered them and then I did not turn on my fan. That's actually the reason why I have a fan in here now. So that the fan will help grow stronger seedlings. 
and to get rid of that edema. At first, it looks like a viral or bacterial issue, but I am so glad that it's not. Now, if you And after I use the fan, actually they're looking better except for the green leaves. It's because they can't absorb nutrients anymore. This is dry. I let the... I let the potting soil dry. Um, I'll show you the top of the plant. Uh, this one. Okay. Now that one is looking good. No problems with that. So now I'm thinking, I think all we can do now is remove, say if we pinch this off, and then we just rely on the new growth. And then the new growth will be healthier. See that? Yeah, so I'm just going to have to remove all of this damaged leaves from plant edema or tomato edema. I've seen that edema does not happen in tomatoes only. It also happens in other plants like potatoes. Uh, I've seen one video of pepper plants having edema. And also edema, um, I've read, is common in hydroponic plants but these reduced tomatoes are looking great now look at that no more issues don't mind the yellow leaves in the bottom they're supposed to come off they're not the true leaves but we're looking at the true leaves and they're looking amazing there's even one here i put on the floor because it does not fit in the trees and yeah that's looking good so today is gonna be a busy day for up potting many of these plants behind me and maybe planting some seedlings in my main garden it's gonna be 80 degrees today and it's a nice sunny day well that's gonna be all for today i know that this video is longer than usual but i just wanted to show you the updates on my seedlings some wins and some issues that i am trying to work out I'm going to see you again in my next video. Have a great day.